In today's video, I'll be showing you some of the biggest buffs in Siege history. The first of which was released in year two, season one, or Operation Velvet Shell. In this update, Ubisoft decided to give Glass's scope a massive buff, and that was giving his scope thermal capabilities, which if you don't know, were not present on launch. When Glass first came out, his scope didn't really do much other than give him additional magnification, which allowed him to be better at long distances. But Ubisoft decided that that wasn't enough for Glass because he really wasn't performing well in the pick rate chart. So they gave him the thermal capabilities. However, they did not come with the constraints that Glass has today. He did not have to stand still for his thermal capabilities to go active. They were active 24-7 no matter how fast he was moving. This allowed him to be really good for getting aggressive on the enemy team, and with him having access to smoke grenades as a secondary option, it really helped him to excel in professional play and at the higher ranks of normal matchmaking. And the next massive operator that would get buffed is Mute, who in Wind Bastion would get access to the SMG-11. Now, Mute getting access to the SMG-11 may seem like a minor balancing change, but it immediately made him one of the best operators in the game. That is because of him having access to the M590 shotgun as one of his primary options. This meant that he could now set up the bomb site in a similar vein to Smoke while having a top tier gadget that could deny walls and drones. This would immediately have a massive effect on Mute's pick rate, and it would also cause him to be ingrained in a lot of people's strategies. Strategies. And the next major buff that would come the defender's way would happen almost a year after this in Operation Emperor Rise, and that was the deployable shield rework. The deployable shield rework basically added glass slits into the deployable shield that defenders could use to see attackers on the other side of it. And this was strong because it allowed a defender to play behind their deployable shield and then swing out onto an attacker and get a free pick. They basically function very similar to a mirror window. And with Jaeger being in such a strong position and with the next season Operation Shifting Tides bringing Wamai to the game, this would have a pro profound effect on the meta and would honestly shape the way we played the game forever. All of us as players still feel the effects of this change all the way today because it has undoubtedly changed the way we set up the bomb site and has changed our defensive strategies forever. But speaking of shifting tides, the next major buff would come in shifting tides and that change would be Cade's electric claw buff. Basically what this buff did is it increased the radius of his electric claws to now be able to reach three walls at once instead of just two. This was massive for obvious reasons. It basically made Cade the objectively best breach denial operator overnight. It was no longer a debate. Cade was objectively better than Bandit in almost every way. He could now get a total of six walls with both of his electric claws, and he could also get hatches, which Bandit did not have the ability to do. Also, the radius being a lot larger allowed for players to place electric claws far away from the walls they were wanting to electrify to more effectively hide them, which made it even more difficult for the attack to get rid of them if Thatcher wasn't on the board. And a buff that would come the attacker's way would be the Habana rework that would come in Operation Neon Don. This rework allowed Habana to switch between different firing modes, which caused her launcher to shoot different amounts of pellets. She could now switch between shooting two pellets, four pellets, or six pellets. Two pellets were enough to open a soft hatch, four pellets were enough to open a reinforced hatch, and six pellets were mainly useful just for opening wall angles. This allowed Habana to open a lot more than what she could before, because every time she wanted to open a hatch before, she'd have to use six pellets, which meant that two of her pellets were basically going to waste, and it also meant that she couldn't open as many hatches. And if she wanted to open a soft hatch, or a castle barricade, she'd have to waste six pellets, which realistically wasn't worth it. And so this rework instantly made Habana a whole lot more versatile and definitely helped her to compete with Thermite. And going back to the defense, our next major buff would come in Operation Crystal Guard, and that was Ubisoft's decision to give Wamai two additional magnets. Before this update, Wamai only had access to four of his magnets, which meant that he could only capture four projectiles in a round. However, Ubisoft upped this to six, which was significantly more than before. And when you consider that around this time, Jaeger was starting to get weaker and weaker because his guns were getting nerfed and his gadget was getting nerfed as well, this put Wamai in a really good position. He now had really competitive guns, especially in comparison to his competition, Jaeger, and his gadget on paper could now compete with Jaeger. After this point, it really became a contentious topic in the community as to whether or not Wamai was better than Jaeger. And slowly over time, people would come to realize that Wamai actually was better. So I think this was a massively influential change and definitely helped to shape the conversation around Wamai going forward. And speaking of projectiles, the next major buff that would come would be in Operation Demon Veil. Vale. And this buff was for the Operator Gang. Basically, what Ubisoft decided to do in this patch is to give her an additional Candela, but lower the duration of the flash effect to make it less annoying to deal with. Overall, this was a major buff for Yang, because having access to four Candelas that can blind basically an entire room is undoubtedly strong. And considering that LMGs over the next few updates would start to become more and more prevalent, it put Ying in the perfect position to capitalize on this meta, and it caused a lot of people to start playing her more and more. Nowadays, Ying is considered to be one of the best attackers in the game. 
game. And the primary reason why that is the case is because of the fact that she has access to so many of her candelas. And another buff that came in Operation Demon Veil that many people forget about is the major change that Ubisoft decided to make to Bandit in this patch. That buff being him being able to attach multiple of his Bandit batteries to a single wall. Because of before, if his charges got EMP'd, they were disabled on the wall and you'd have to either pick them up or shoot them before you could place down another Bandit charge. However, with this update, you could immediately start placing another Bandit charge down before your battery was even off the wall. So this may seem like a minor change on paper, but in reality, it really did help Bandit a ton. And considering that Thatcher's pick rate was getting lower and lower at this point because of other external factors, Bandit really started to become more competitive in the scene. Cade was dominating for reasons I discussed earlier with his major buffs, and so now Bandit getting this change kind of started to reshape the conversation a little bit. And a major buff that Ubisoft would decide to make just two seasons later that is still having effects on us today is the Dokubi buff that came in Operation Brutal Swarm. This gave her access to impact EMPs in her loadout and made her calls affect dead defenders, meaning they couldn't access their team's cams throughout the duration of any call Dokubi made. So this meant that now Dokubi could deny access to the entire enemy team's camera system and no defender could have access to it. She could also hack into their camera system using the phones dropped by dead defenders, and she forced all defenders' phones to make a loud audio cue, which allowed her to reveal the position of any nearby defenders. This change obviously wasn't necessary, and it immediately made her uh, the objectively strongest operator on the attack. Her pick rate would soar through the roof, and pro players would start using her heavily. That is why Ubisoft decided to rework Dokubi in the most recent update. It's because Dokubi was having such an effect on the competitive ecosystem that they had to do something about it. And another buff that Ubisoft would bring in Operation Brutal Swarm applied to an operator that really wasn't that popular, that operator being Dot. In this buff, Ubisoft decided to make his stims heal operators for 200 HP compared to 40 HP previously. And he was also giving access to a Bailiff secondary option. The Bailiff allowed him to set up the bomb site for his team, which was massive, especially considering Doc is a three armor, which means that he spends a lot of the time on the bomb site. But obviously giving him five times the healing capability is going to have a huge effect on him as well. And it allowed him to take a downed operator and revive them up to a maximum HP immediately. Now healing operators are obviously still pretty niche in Siege because there is the one shot headshot mechanic and time to kill is so fast. But this buff made Doc a lot more popular because it allowed him in those circumstances where you do need a healer to be quite strong. Speaking of healers, another major buff that would come in Operation Brutal Swarm would be the changes to Rook. Rook's armor in this patch was changed to now grant the ability for the entire team to self-revive. So if your teammate picked up the Rook armor at the start of the prep phase and they went down later on in the round, they could try to revive themselves. And this was on top of the fact that his armor already gave you additional HP. And so if the enemy team wasn't very good at hitting their headshots, you could very easily abuse Rook armor. However, since healing operators are so niche, Rook has never really had a massive pick rate, especially compared to the other operators in this video. But I do think that this buff was such a massive one that it was worth pointing out in this video. And the next major buff that I want to discuss is the Grim reworks that came out over the course of two different seasons. Those seasons being Operation Dread Factor and Operation Heavy Metal. And the reworks were for the relatively new operator, Grim. Grim's gadget right on release was really slow and clunky, and because of it being so slow and clunky, it oftentimes ended up getting the person using it killed. So Ubisoft decided to make some major changes to his gadget to alleviate this problem and to hopefully buff the capabilities of his bees. So over the course of these two updates, Ubisoft made Grim's gadget way more consistent by making pretty much every animation quicker, and by giving his bees the ability to bounce off of surfaces if he switches to that firing mode. This allowed him to get his bees around a corner or into an area that he can't exactly see himself, which made his bees a whole lot more viable. You can actually get some pretty nasty lineups with these nowadays, and they can be extremely strong for executing onto a bomb site or for playing the post plan. Grim literally went from one of the worst operators in the game to borderline one of the best overnight just because of these two reworks. The same thing could be said about Legion, who also got a major buff in Operation Heavy Metal. In Operation Heavy Metal, Ubisoft decided to make Legion's gadget cooldown way quicker, give him an additional additional trap. They buffed the damage of his traps across the board, made them mechanical, but to give him one simple downside, they decided to remove the cloaking capability of his traps. This overall was a massive buff to Legion because before his traps really wouldn't damage you that often. And all they really did was slow an enemy's aggression and give Legion a little bit of info. However, now they would more consistently deal chip damage to an opponent and they weren't countered by nearly as many operators because EMPs couldn't disable them and Bravo couldn't hack a goo mine either. This one update launched Legion into the strategy sphere and he immediately became a really powerful operator at the higher levels and his pick rate improved as well overall today legion is probably one of the best defenders in the game and you can reference that back to this exact change and after the legion buff in operation heavy metal we have one of the biggest reworks in siege history 
that being the shield rework in Operation Deadly Omen. This shield rework targeted operators like Montaigne and Blitz in an attempt to make them more balanced and more fun to play and go against. In this rework, Ubisoft decided to remove their ability to hip fire, but to make up for that, they added the ability to sprint with the shield equipped. They allowed shield operators to jump through barricades. They allowed them to reload, throw grenades, and throw drones behind their shield safely. They added free look to their shields to allow them to look around while staying behind the safety of their shield. And they added a new mechanic that allowed defenders to shoot at shield operators to slow them down. This was a major rework, and it really brought shield operators into the conversation as being some of the best operators in the game especially Montaigne. You did have the downside now of having to ADS to shoot, but you got a ton of other benefits in exchange. And if you talk to most people who played shields before this rework, hip firing really wasn't a very common strategy unless you were really up close. So you really weren't missing out on much with the loss of that mechanic while still getting a ton of other quality of life features. Immediately after this rework, shield operators would start seeing more and more recognition in the siege community and their pick rates and win rates would go up over time. Another trap operator that would see massive improvements due to a buff is Malusi, who got buffed in Operation New Blood. In Operation New Blood, Ubisoft decided to give Malusi four Banshees instead of the three she had, and they gave her the ITA-12S shotgun as a new secondary option. This was absolutely huge because she now no longer had access to just three Banshees, she had four. Which, considering that her Banshees slowed the opponent significantly and gave a ton of intel, it allowed her to be extremely oppressive. But giving her an ITA-12S shotgun on top of that allowed her to help her team set up the bomb site, especially since she had impacts on top of that. Malusi nowadays is realistically just a utility powerhouse, and that's because of this update. Anyways, hopefully you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, I make serious content just like this twice a week, so go subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter if you don't miss the next upload. Also, I plan on filming more videos over the coming months that involve some of you guys. If you want the chance to be featured in a video, join my Discord with the link in the description. I'll be reaching out to people in there first, along with my Twitter, for the chance to be featured. My first video on this format has already been recorded and should be going up within the next two weeks or so. I also brought this up in my previous video, but I just wanted to bring up here as well, so that way you guys can be there when I announce it. And if you want to watch another video just like this one of it be popping up on your screen right now that i'm sure you all enjoy i'll see you next time friends and peace